pozdrav svima, veliko mi zadovoljstvo da vam poželim dobrodošlicu na prvu epizodu podcasta koji je Gradski info portal pokrenuo. Podcast u oktagonu bavi se novostima u MMA sportu i zaista imamo veliku čast da imamo izuzetno gosta u prvoj emisiji, to je borac koji je izuzetno poznat kada je reč o partnernoj borbi, kada je reč o MMA sportu, ima najbolju dvoranu u Brazilu, a kada se govori o menadžerskom postotu, zaista govorimo o čovjeku koji je na najvišem mogućem nivou, Marcelo Brigadeiro. I'm also gonna make the introduction in English. I just told our viewers that we are having a rare honor to welcome someone like you, someone who is a big name when we talk about grand game, Luta Livre, someone who is a big name when we talk about MMA, and someone who is great when we talk about managing fighters. So we are, have great honor to have you here. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Oh, brother, you, you can believe that, that the honor is mine to be here with you guys. You know how much I like you. Uh, Boyan is like a, a real brother for, uh, to me. It's like family. He knows that. And to be here with you is a, a big honor for me. I'm very, very happy. Thank you, brother. We are flattered. Right, it's our honor too. Hello, brother. How are you? Long time. Long time. Hey, I'm fine. Miss you. Miss you. Yeah, long time. A long time from last uh, our We'll meet from uh, U- uh, UFC in St. Petersburg when, when Alex yeah. Lenko fought. Uh, w- what is with Alex now? Can you tell us something about his career? He lost his fight uh, on decision last uh, last week. Yeah, uh, I believe Alex got... Uh, well, what, what usually happens here in the team, uh, which is a statement of the good work we do, but at the same time, sometimes it's tricky, is that things happen very fast for the fighters here. I believe that Alex uh, was technically uh, ready for the UFC when he got the UFC, but he was too young, he was not yeah. m- mature enough, so he was, he needed to, to, to become more mate, mature, uh, mature on, the, on his personal life, because this affects the, the fight for sure. So this last fight, in my opinion, was the, uh, was his best performance from all the four fights he had. Uh, he showed that he's a, a more experienced guy, a more experienced fighter now. And it was a very, very even fight against a very tough opponent who had beat many big names already. Uh, but he could have been, uh, he could have won this fight if he didn't make the that mistake in the first round. He scored a great knockout knockdown in the very early in the round and then he decided to jump into the opponent's yeah. guard and he was able to his opponent was was able to hold him for the whole round and, and recover so second round uh his opponent took his back won the round and third round alex just smashed him and took the round so but the 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 judge uh two judge saw this as a because a big problem, the biggest problem was that he, he, he lost a point on the second round yeah. for putting his toes on the cage. Oh, yeah. And this point cost him the fight. So even though one, one of the, the judge gave it a draw, but the other two gave it the fight for his opponent because of the, the point that was deducted. So yeah, uh, it happens, it happens, yeah. nothing we can do. Yeah, I'm very emotional with uh, fighters who who fought in my event in SBC and especially when your fighters f- uh, fight. Uh, so it's it's very very bad. It was very bad when when I look look at that fight. Yeah, but you know, uh we feel it we, we don't like to lose, of course. We do everything to win, but it's part of the game. It's part of the game yeah, and you know, especially nowadays, uh, I see things a little bit different. Um, uh, a loss like this doesn't hurt me so much because he went there, he fought well, he he, he left everything in the cage, he done what he could do. Uh, the kind of loss that hurts me today is when when the fighter, for some reason, he cannot perform, he cannot do what we trained, or maybe a, a punch lands too early or a submission lands too early or he just just can't perform on the night, that kind of loss really, really hurts me bad because uh, we are not able to show what we've done, you know? But yeah. this kind of loss is like just, after being on this game for a long, long time, I understand this as part of the game. There's yeah. nothing you can do. Yeah. Will you be able to, to leave him in UFC? Do you, do you think that he can, he can uh, get another contract with UFC? 
No, no, no. Impossible. Because uh, uh, it was his last fight in the contract. Yeah. Uh, the UFC nowadays, they are not very interested in, in Brazilian fighters on the lightweight division. Actually, lightweight, welterweight, featherweight, and bantamweight yeah. are the worst classes to work with uh, towards the UFC nowadays because they have too many fighters on yeah. on these classes. And of course, they got to uh, give priority uh, for fighters from markets that are financially interesting for them, yeah. which means uh, US, first, first place, United Kingdom, second place, uh, Western Europe, third place, and Asia. Yeah. Those are the key markets for them. So us, Brazilians, you guys, Serbians, we are all fucked. Uh, you think we too? I, I hope we are not on that map. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are, right? Especially on this weight class that got so many, many fighters, you know. Okay, brother. So what, what I wanted to say about to, to, to viewers in Serbia, man, many people know you, many people don't know you still, but you did some great things when it comes to MMA in Serbia. Can you remind, remind us of some things that you already done for Serbian MMA? People don't no, realize how I, important you are. I didn't do much. I didn't do much. Boyan done everything, you know. Wow. I just I just gave him some hand to to finalize some deals. But Boyan is the guy who is who is doing everything for MMA in Serbia. And I'm very happy, very proud and honored to be working with him for some some time already. And we were able to bring some guys to the UFC and that's awesome. But it's much more his work than mine. No, no. Uh, yeah, you're too modest. Yeah, you are. <laughs> That's what well, you, I know what he thinks. I, mean, I, he... I, I just uh, had the luck to, to meet you a long time ago. That's that's the only thing I, I did right in pass. No, but, uh, you know, what, what do you do over there with F SBC building all these fighters up, bringing attention to them, to their careers? This is huge. This is huge. This, is, this makes a, the, the whole difference. When you look at the long-term return for these fighters, for their careers, uh, what you invest in their image and putting on a great show, great production, it's just, that's what really matters, you know. Once you have everything, uh, what I do that's trying to sell them to the, to the promotions is just a small part of it. But yeah, it's just awesome what, what you've been doing over there. Oh, thank you, brother. Thanks, brother. What do you think about uh, Serbian fighters you know? About Stefan, about Dusko, about uh, other guys you know? Well, I think they are all very brave, right? They, they remind me a little bit of the, the Liverpool fighters. Very brave. They are not scared of anything. Uh, they, they show a great grappling skills, maybe because the, the work you've been doing there for such a long time uh their striking is good as well um uh, i think the what what need to work a little bit more for serbian fighters is basically two things one is wrestling that i see that's the the biggest uh, the weakest point in serbian mma and also in brazilian mma uh, i think we're very similar and uh the weight cut i believe because uh, let's say Dusko. Dusko is an amazing fighter, but I do think he's in the wrong weight division, you know, um, because it doesn't matter how techn technically good you are, if you get a much stronger fighter for, when we're talking only for three rounds of fight, sometimes this guy is able to, to just don't let you fight, you know, just to stop you. So those are the two things I, I, I need uh, Serbian MMA need to work more on. On the other hand, I think uh, the fighters there are really well-rounded. Uh, they are very brave. They are not scared of anything. And they got great personality, I think, as fighters and as people. And I, I love the Serbian fighters. I love it. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's why everybody loves you from Serbia. That, yeah. That's probably the reason. But what would you say about the thing that hurts us the most? We still didn't get over it. Stefan's loss to Dwight Grant in the UFC Jacksonville last year. What do, what do you remember about that fight and how everything turned out for, for Stefan? Oh, the, the last fight from Stefan the UFC? Yeah. 
I think for some reason, uh, Stefan, he, I think he doesn't know how good he is. That's the impression I have. Because uh, this kid's amazing. I think Stefan is a, an amazing fighter uh, in every aspect. Uh, I'm 100% sure he can. He can finish any fight if he really believes that. On his last fight, he, he seemed very hesitant, very giving too much respect for the opponent. Uh, it, 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 it is one of the fights that if he just said, fuck it, I'm just going to go for it, uh, he would probably have finished this in the first round. Um, uh, and the proof is that on the third round, when he said, yeah, fuck it, I'm losing the fight, I go for it, he nearly killed the opponent, right? Yeah. So uh, I think uh, when it comes to Stefan, I think it's much more... Uh, um, uh, the fact that he needs to to know to understand how good how how much of a high level fighter he is because everybody understands this everybody sees this but when he comes to fight he gives too much respect for the opponents you know and he shouldn't do it he should just go there and make a statement and say listen I'm gonna show you I'm fucking better than you <laughs> because he is he's amazing he's an amazing fighter I, I'm I, I really enjoy uh, uh, watching Stefan fighting. He is just uh, too polite, even in fights, you know. And you yeah. cannot do that, yeah. especially in the UFC. It's, especially it's in the UFC, not good on that stage of uh, fighting of sport. Yeah, it's it's crazy because when you when you go to the the level of the comp of competition, there you're gonna meet the the best in the world, the best of every country. They, they, those guys are there, and you know, you gotta have like many, many different tools and skills uh, to be able to to perform on the level. And sometimes I've seen, I've seen it many, many times. Fighters that are just fucking amazing, technically, uh, physically, they are very, very good. But when it gets over there, for some reason, they they they, they let the, the pressure take the best of them. And, and they just can't perform at the best, you know? And sometimes also fighters, they, they don't understand how good they are. And, you know, it comes with time, you know? Sometimes they have time. Sometimes they are lucky enough to survive inside the, inside the organization until they understand this, they understand that they really deserve to be there. And then they just, boom. We know, uh, we got a, an example of a Brazilian fighter that just did it, uh, charged the Bronx. He just, on the start, uh, he, he was a bad fighter, like in general, a bad fighter because he was very skillful, but on his mind, he didn't know that. He didn't, he didn't truly believe that he deserved to be there. And that's why he gave up on many fights. That's why he just, just didn't want to fight anymore in a couple of fights. But he was lucky enough that every time he was supposed to get cut, he was there and boom, won a fight. And then they gave him some more time, some more experience. And then he realized and said, listen, no, I'm, I'm really good. Uh, I deserve to be here. And then he is what, what he is nowadays. Yeah, champion. A champion, a true killer. I mean, he's great. I must ask yeah, you, I must ask you uh, your opinion of, I know your, op your opinion because we text a lot. Uh, about yeah. it, but I must ask you about uh, your opinion of uh, Dushko's stand-up game. He's risky well, stand-up. It, it, it's a weird, it's a, a, a very unorthodox and, and dangerous stand-up game, in my opinion. Because if you, uh, the first class you have at any boxing school in the world, they're going to say, bring your chin down and your shoulders forward. Uh, bring your shoulders up and forward and your chin down to protect your chin. And Dusko, he does exactly the opposite. He brings the shoulders backwards and put the chin up in the air. Uh, this, man, I always have a heart attack every time I watch his, him fight, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he can take... I, I am impressed of the amount of punch he, damage he can take because he, he takes like clean shots in the shin and he's still fighting. So that shows like how brave he is. But it's a different, it's a different style. It's a awkward style and very dangerous uh, 
striking style because because if you get someone with a, a longer leverage average uh, leverage sorry uh, if you have someone uh, who is a, a striking specialist he will find your, your shin you know he will find it you'll find the chin and so it's dangerous dangerous very dangerous but he's different ufc like different different guys and yeah exactly yeah it's different it's different it's awkward uh, well and he make he make works you know uh, uh, he, he fought he fought some legit opponents already he beat some really good fighters already so he makes this awkward style work for him and on the other hand uh, not many people uh, are prepared for that because you don't usually have sparring partners that, that play this way you know so it's hard for someone to copy do school to be to be training for uh, along with his opponent so yeah there's there's the good and the bad <laughs> yeah but last time he wasn't lucky i mean he had a great game plan I and mean, he did okay in the first round but unfortunately that elbow from angel kuani i mean it ended everything he, he started a very good fight but yeah, no, no. I like Dusko. Dusko is a great fighter. Uh, I just he only just fucking gives me a heart attack every time he fights because every time he brings his chin up and the head down and the, and the opponent's punch comes this close, I just, oh. you know, I just I almost die. <laughs> I can imagine when you guys are in the corner, but it must be much worse, you know. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Much worse. Yeah, I lose my hair because of him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he would have long hair otherwise. But... Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion about uh, Alexander Akic? His injury, his his uh, um, uh, status in uh, what is his status now in MTK? In what do you think? Yeah, what, what will happen? Uh, we we still working together. Uh, we still gonna be working together for a long time. Uh, he is, uh, I think, he was doing great on the fight. It was very unfortunate. He was just, he he, he seemed to be uh, uh, in the complete control of all the action. You know, he was just, I don't know, man. He was just showing to be on another level. You know, Blackovic seemed to be a little bit scared of him because Rakic got. He, he was super fast on his striking. His coach, Richie, done a great job because his hands were so fast, so accurate. And when uh, Blakovic thought that he was keeping strength standing, he went for a takedown. And, you know, just, it was just looking sharp, amazing. And then something like that happens. When Well, I told him that, you know, when something like this happens, you, you can even be pissed off you know we just gotta accept because <laughs> you know yeah uh but he'll be back he'll be back stronger he he's already recovering he had his surgery on the same week he's already recovering he's hungry uh and he understands that everything happens for a reason uh yeah uh we got his back you know, on the defeat and he's gonna be on the top again and i do believe that he can be the champion of this weight class because he got everything. Uh, he's very good technically. His mentality is great. He's huge for the weight class. He's, I don't know how this kid can can cut weight to 205 because he's super big, you know. Um, so I think, and he's too young. So I think he, he I'm, that, I'm very confident we're going to get the belt. Yeah, but, and that would be a nice thing for us Serbians because you Brazilians are used to having world champions. In yeah. Serbia, we still didn't have any, so You're we hope away. that he will get get the belt. Yeah, I believe I believe Rakic uh, can do that and will be the Serbian champion in the UFC. It it will help us help us uh, to bring UFC here in Serbia. Yeah, yeah, you know, I I got no doubt that if the UFC goes there, it's gonna be fully packed the place because Serbians love fighting right you guys love uh, MMA and you know that would be great and Rakic being a champion they gotta they gotta go there there's nothing they can do they got they gotta go there they gotta put a big show over there especially with with Yuri because we are close to each other yeah Czech Serbia. Republic now has, has, has the champion 
Imagine that, yeah. imagine that matchup, Yiri and uh, Rakic. Yeah, that, man, that that fight would be amazing. You know, Rakic against Giri would be an amazing fight. The clash of styles. Uh, Rakic is very orthodox when it comes to his striking and his his wrestling, his grappling. He's very solid at what he does. Giri is just the opposite. We never know what to expect from the guy. He just completely crazy and un unorthodox. It's really hard to train for someone like him because you don't know what you're going to do. Uh, both guys are very big. Both guys are very confident. And that would be an amazing fight. You know, you know I just wish that uh, Rakic could have won the last fight because that would be the next fight we would be watching on the light heavyweight division. And this would be awesome. But now he, he make us uh, time to work on it, to make uh, UFC here. And when he can, can come back, uh we will we will have the opportunity to bring the ufc to, to the serbia UFC <laughs> yeah. maybe yeah, maybe it's, it's for the good yeah <laughs> you never know that's you why know, it's good i always i always tell the ufc that they gotta go there i always tell them you know uh but when when they make this kind of decision it comes to many many aspects political aspects economical aspects uh the, the tv tv deals they got in place so uh, too many factors they have to uh, consider it, but I'm always pushing for this. I'm always telling them, guys, you got to go to Serbia. <laughs> and Yuri is one of my favorite fighters uh, now in the UFC, in any division, but uh, there is no chance to Yuri to win Rakic in, in Serbia. There is no chance. Do you know that Yuri once lost fight in Serbia from Bojan Veličković? Oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. <laughs> The, so Rakic would beat him here for sure. I agree. I agree. It it plays a a, a great factor, you know, uh, when you're fighting at home uh, yeah. and with the, the whole support of your your fans is a is a a huge difference. You know, there are some studies that show that usually when you fight at home, your chances to win are much higher. You know, that plays a big factor for sure. Yeah, for, especially we have. I think that our arena, Arena Stark in Belgrade, is uh, second or, or third uh, uh, by uh, by capacity capacity in in Europe. In Europe. So it would be that's because of uh, basketball. Yeah, yeah right. Sure. Yes, it would be full yeah, yeah. for sure. 25. You guys are great at, ba at basketball as well, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are the best in basketball. What's the name of the guy that was Nik in the Nikola Jokic the MVP playoffs? Don't you? Nikola, ah, no, 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 Nikola Jokic is Serbian. Luka, Joker, Joker, Jokic. Yeah, Luka Doncic is uh, half Serbian. His father is Serbian and his mother is uh, Slovenian. Slovenian. Ah, okay. But Nikola Jokic is MVP in uh, NBA. Nikola Jokic is Serbian. Serbian guy is the MVP in the NBA now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there are many, many Ser Serbian uh, players in the NBA, in NBA nowadays, right? We are the best in basketball. And but, in tennis. And in tennis, yeah. <laughs> But for in ten, in five to ten years, uh, we will make uh, MMA to be dominant in, to uh, to be I, the, yeah. I do believe it. I, I do believe that. I, I believe that you know. Uh, I think you you're doing the right the right decisions and you you moving very intelligently uh, and you are really building up MMA over there. I see Serbia soon as being one of the biggest uh, potencies in MMA. We will be dominant like uh, Dagestan. Uh, now, Dagestan Russians are in UFC. Yeah. I I promise that. Tell me, please, uh, uh, um, uh, opinion uh, about uh, uh, Stefan Negucic and Predra Bogdanovic, and what is next for them? Well, you know, this these two guys they they already they already deserve to be in the UFC. There's no doubt. You know what, what they done, the kind of uh, opponents they beat. Um, for sure, if it was a matter of, uh, oh, this guy deserves coming in. No, this guy doesn't deserve. They would be in the UFC already because both deserve, you know. Uh, Negucic, he just he just comes off a great win streak. He's both are undefeated, but Negucic, he lately, he just beat some Dagestan fighters, some guys that are really tough. And Predrag, he just had tough opponents since the very first fight, you know. All, yeah. Most of his opponents were much more experienced than him, and the kid just dominate everybody.
So I think it's for them, it's just, uh, of course, the pandemic made a huge problem for everybody, especially from countries like Serbia, Brazil, and everything, because uh, made the UFC just uh, centralize all the, his their events in the US and one or another in the UK. Uh, this makes it much harder for other nationalities the, from countries which require visas for most of the countries like Brazil and Serbia. We need visas for nearly everywhere. It's really hard for us to, to compete against uh, uh, a pro American prospect, you know, yes. because if, if a pullout happens in the UFC, for a Serbian or a Brazilian, we need at least two months to get a P1 visa. Uh, an American, he can be there tomorrow. So they they give priority for Americans, UK fighters, and this Dana White Contender Series doesn't help either because they bring many Americans in all the time. So uh, this changed the the whole format uh, of what uh, the market was, the, the way the market was going before the pandemic. And but now that things are getting better, uh, the UFC is once again looking to expand their events back. So they they've been in Singapore, they are going to Paris, they are back in in, in Abu Dhabi soon. They are looking for other areas. This might help, and hopefully, these two guys will be soon in the UFC because they do deserve. They do deserve two great fighters, and uh, there's. To be honest, uh, there are maybe only two, three organizations that we could think of them fighting there. No other organization really deserves to have fighters of such a caliber as these two guys. So, brother, what we kind of flew over it. I mean, we just mentioned MTK. What's the situation with MTK now and how do we go forward when it, when it goes to the future? Okay, uh, MTK has decided to to stop operations, to cease operations, uh, but we still had like loads of fighters on the contract, so we could not just say, okay, bye bye, here you go. Um, so right now, uh, I'm finalizing the the process just to set up a new company, and we're gonna absorb all these contracts and bring all the fighters under this new company and which gonna be better uh, because we're gonna bring some aspects we use to 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 have at MTK and with some more, but I'm gonna have more uh, more flexibility on what I wanted to do, and there are some very promising plans in the future, and I think it's gonna be just great. I'm very excited. Can can wait to start. Have we already decided on, on the name of the new management company or can we have the exclusive or not yet? Yeah, I have. Uh, uh, this will be called Aspera Sports Agency. Oh, so okay. it's already a, a very well-known and very respected name in the MMA community. And I think it just suits really, really well, uh, especially because uh, one of the the projects is to bring Aspera back again, uh, the event. So yeah, that's how it's going to be called. Nobody knows yet. Now they will. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a great name. Bro brother, I know that you are the best manager in MMA business, especially because uh, we are brothers and I love you. But uh, uh, can you tell us something about cheaters, liars, uh, fake uh, managers in our business and how, how much it's uh, dangerous and uh, for for new kids new new guys you know man uh you know um uh, managing fighters is a very 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 uh, tough task and it brings a lot of uh, responsibility because you you're not you're not playing chess you know you're you're playing with people's lives and dreams and many guys just you know the last six to seven years many guys just joined the market and said okay i'm a manager now and blah 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 
but they don't have what it takes to be a manager. You know, to be a manager, you need to have many, many skills that will guarantee that you know how, how to give your fighters good opportunities. And then, of course, when it comes to, to uh, use, have benefits from this opportunity or, or not, is up to the fighter and his team. But you got to be able to generate good opportunities for these fighters. And to, to really be able to get a good opportunity to a fighter, you got to understand the whole path, which fights you got to take, when you got to take, in which platforms, against who. Fighters, I like to say that the fights that make sense, you know. Uh, what, what usually happens with all this, these liars, these cheaters is that although... Uh, I, I, I can say only uh, by myself. Let's say, let's use myself as an example. I work with the UFC since 2007. So it's been 15 years already. Uh, I know really, really well Shen Shelby, Mick Maynard. I know how these guys think. And awesome. I know how I know how to approach them. I know, I, you know, we got a, a, a good relation, a great relation, actually. And man, it's just uh, to to get there is hard. It's hard, you know. To get to this point is hard. What does young managers do? And uh, and even though I have all this great relation with them, and I know that they really uh, evaluate what I say. So if I say that a fighter is good, I know they're gonna pay pay attention on this fighter for sure. You know, you can imagine that they 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 receive. Uh, an average of 300 emails a day. They will not read every email they get. They will read uh, only first from, emails. Only from guys you, they know yeah, and they trust, yeah. Yeah, they, the guys they trust. And I know I am on the top of the list of the guys they trust and because I always delivered and I never lied to them. So even like this, I can never, ever, ever promise a fighter that I'm gonna get them in the UFC or in PFL or AC. I, I can't do that because there's a chance that, I don't know, for some reason, I don't know, 10 years ago, the fighter slapped Mick Maynard in the face and he hates the fighter. I don't know. So I can't promise, you know, I can't make promise. There's been many, many situations where I knew for a fact that I would get the guy in the UFC. Because the guy comes to me and say, listen, I want to work with you and blah, blah, blah. And then we talk. Then I go call Mick and say, listen, Mick, I got this guy. What do you think? Oh, I love him. I would love to have to sign him. So, man, what he's saying is, if you bring this fighter to me, I'm going to sign him. And yet, I cannot go to the fighter and say, listen, I guarantee you're going to put in the UFC. Because I don't know, maybe Mick changes his mind. Maybe then I calls him and say, listen, I don't want this guy over there. I got no interest in on his country or I, I don't want. So I cannot make promise. So the, the first thing that a fighter should know and would be a great filter to know if the manager is real, is for real or not, is trustable or not, is if he promises you anything, just run away, man. Nobody can promise anything. Nobody can promise anything in this business. The only thing I promise to the fighters that are going to work fucking hard to fulfill their dreams. I'm going to work my ass off to be able to do that. And I do this. But that's the only thing I can promise. And I, I, I've done already some crazy things that nobody could imagine. Uh, and I was able to bring some fighters into the UFC that many man managers, big managers, they just couldn't. And I could. But yet, I don't make promise, you know? And nowadays, what you see is managers promising everything. Uh, they can fulfill the promises. So they get a lot of pressure. And they, in a way, to give a feedback, uh, uh, to show that they are working, they get the wrong fights for the fighters, fighters that they shouldn't take. And then these fighters go over there. They lose one, two fights in shows they shouldn't be fighting against opponents they shouldn't be facing. They lose two fights, they make some money, and they ruin their career, you know? So, yeah, it's, it, it's tricky. It's tricky. I, I can say that there are maybe 
five, six good managers in the whole world nowadays. Five, six good managers. The rest is shit crap. But if you try to enumerate, you're going to find over 100 managers. So there's a huge chance that a young kid end up uh, with a shit manager. Yeah. Good example is uh, how you run, how we run, but you run a Dushko career. He fought in uh, UFC with his first fight with, I, I think, 1-3 or 1-4 uh, uh, record in UFC. Then then he lost the uh, second fight he lost in UFC from j- just uh, sixth and O fighter. It's not some killer. Third fight he fight he fought with uh, ah it was short notice uh, G- Gregory but, Gregory Rodriguez but Gregory yeah. is lost in contender and fourth fight again one four so, so he so had a good road yeah. I mean he he had a good good fights for him this when you look yeah, look from that point of view good good running career UFC career but I want uh, to yes. to mention one one uh, re- re- say say please say please yeah yeah you no I, I w- I would just say that this is a, a very wrong conception that the fighters usually have. They believe that a manager is important to take them to the UFC. Yeah. No, not only for this. A manager is as important as to, uh, when they, they are already in the UFC or in another big promotion. The manager will be the difference between them getting like horrible matchups or favorable matchups. Of course, when it gets to a point that you are uh, top 20, top 15, there are no, not many favorable matchups over there. But until you get there to guarantee you uh, the survival inside the, the organization, there's so much that goes on between manager and matchmaker that, man, it's just crazy. Sometimes me and Mick, we just fucking kill each other on the phone. You know, we get pissed off and then we hang the phone. And then after two days, we speak again. And, you know, to get uh, uh, Blakovic's fight for wreckage, it was a fucking nightmare. It was six months negotiation to get the fight. Six months. No joke. You know, and there are so many things involved in order to get the fight you want it's so hard because sometimes the fight you want for your fighters not the fight that the ufc wants you know they they have something else in mind so you gotta go into a fucking clash a fucking war sometimes you lose sometimes you win but you gotta fight many managers i know they just say yes for the ufc you know uh the ufc goes listen you're gonna do this yes this is good and they forget they are not working for the ufc they're working for the fighters you know, uh, my my duty, my my job, is is doing what's the best for my fighter, not for the UFC, right? Uh, but some guys, they uh, most of the managers, they don't understand this. They are scared of saying no to the UFC, and it's not personal. Yes and no are part of the job. You know, sometimes I say no, and they just say, "Listen, you got no choice. That's it." And I will, I will fight, I will fight, I will fight, and then I, I will find no other option. And then I say, okay, you want, you guys want. But sometimes I'm able to, to get what I want. You know, it's just giving and take, you know, you got to play ball. That's it. Do you think that uh, uh, social media and uh, Twitter help to, to match fights or, or, or not? No, not at all, not at all. Uh, this I see this many many times. The fighters to go in camp- campaigns in social media to get the fights they want. Uh, that doesn't make any difference at all. Even for high level like uh, Rakic, Blachowicz, e- even for that level. Nah, not at all, not at all. Uh, y- you gotta understand that at the end of the day, the UFC is not a tournament. Right, it's not like a, a, a BJJ or Luta Libre tournament where the the best fighter are gonna win. It's not like this. They they are a company and they are looking for profit. Yeah, so of course. of course, is their interest that the fighter that generates more profit becomes a champion because they can explore it and get even more profit. It's completely understandable and it's legit. Yeah. If you got a company, 
you want profit. So uh, uh, it's important that fighters try to add value to themselves as fighters. They got to show that they, they are able to, to turn into pay-per-view sellings, into uh, ticket sellings, you know. So they got to speak English. They got to have a good presence in social media. All this, all those factors give the managers more leverage to negotiate, you know. Uh, I can use Dar Darren Thiel as, um, as an example. Thiel, uh, he got it all. He got it all. He's not only a fucking great fighter. He knows how to sell fights. Uh, he's great in social media and interviews and everything. He speaks fluently English and Portuguese, so he hits both markets. So I knew what I had in my hands when he started the UFC career. So, man, I was able to push the UFC so hard, so hard, that too, on his third professional fight, he was making more money than fighters that had already 10 UFC fights, 12 UFC fights. And in four or five fights, I was able to renegotiate his deal twice and get him much more money than many, many, many other fighters on the roster that were there for 20 fights, 15 fights already. Because, because, why? Because I knew he had all the tools uh, to give me leverage in the negotiation. On the other hand, some fighters, they don't speak English. They don't even have a, an Instagram account. They, they are not, they, they only win by decision. They are not exciting to watch. They are from a country that doesn't have pay-per-view, selling culture. The, you know, these guys, I don't have leverage at all. <laughs> you don't know, if the UFC says, that's it, I gotta say, yes, sir, you know? So it all depends on the fighter and what what he give you as leverage to negotiate. About Till, what is uh, his status now with with you? How, relationship with you? Oh, great, awesome! It, we we speak all the time. Till calls me all the time, and you know, uh, he's a great kid. He's an awesome kid, awesome kid. And. I was I was gonna go let on his last fight against Brunson. I was gonna go to the, to the UK for some time to help him training. To help get, uh, but but there was the fucking pandemic, and then the United Kingdom, England, they just shut uh, shut the borders and nobody could get in. Uh, on, on his next fight, I was supposed to do exactly the same thing, but then. I got some guys over here that are also gonna fight for the UFC or contender series, so I gotta, I gotta stay. But we are trying to sort out a way that uh, we can be together again because I know I know he needs that. Um, I miss working with him uh, as a coach, right? Uh, and yeah, I believe that um, I can help make him world champion. So we're trying still to figure out a way of doing this especially now his duo with or his friendship now with uh, Chimaev is good for his career for for next next step yeah. next level especially yeah so yeah of course of he, course it's good it's good uh, he needs he needs people that can put pressure on him you know it's not every, uh, it's not everybody that is able to put pressure on you in training because he's a phenomenal striker he's really good in take down the fence and you know, it's not it's not a, an easy task to get close to him and take him down before he kills you. So <laughs> he needs he needs people there in training that uh, are able to to give him a hard time. That's what he needs. He's purple belt, right? He was purple belt when I trained with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he should come. Uh, sh he should go in Brazil until he gets his black belt and that that's his. Uh, step to to world title in yeah. UFC. you know uh i agree with you but his life uh in in england and that's the reason why he went back to england uh it's much more comfortable it's a much more comfortable life because his sponsors are there uh he got young kids uh so it's 
it's hard for him to be away. You know, it's very hard. At the same time, it's hard for him to have the level of uh, training partners in need uh, where he is, you know, uh, Calbon is a great gym, you know, so uh, very well, but it's hard to find strong, a good and strong wrestlers, grapplers there that can give to the kind of nightmare he needs in training uh, in order to perform at his best in the cage. So it's not the, it's not the easiest task, you know, uh, but we're trying to figure out and, and find a way because I, I am 100% sure that you got what it takes to be, to be a champion one day. And I'm pretty confident he will be a champion one day. He's too young. And he would be a great champion for the UFC. Yeah, he's superstar, born superstar. Yeah, he's a, exactly, exactly. Yeah, what, what about, uh, apart from Till, who also became contender and fought for the world title, you also led the girl who fought last weekend, Tyla Santos. What about her? What, what's your relationship, relationship with her? You helped her a lot with the UFC and everything. So what's the situation yeah, now? Tyla was my uh, was my student for the almost her, her entire career, right? He got here. She got here uh, after she had her first professional fight. And then um, I built her up. I, I taught her everything she knows. I I built her career up. I took her to the UFC. Uh, I got her many wins in the UFC and blah, 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 blah. And then just before not this fight, the last fight, she decided to part ways and to, to go somewhere else because some problems that were happening involving her, her family and so uh, as I always say, uh, I don't I don't want anybody that's not happy uh, by my side. You know, it's just impossible to to be happy this way. You know, I don't want if you don't want to be with me. Uh, well, what can I do? You know, so it was her decision. Uh, she decided to leave, and that's it. Uh, there's not yeah. much uh, we can say, but. Yeah, I hope I hope she she can be successful and she can. She's a great fighter. I know the kind of fighter that uh, I build up over there. And when I put her in the UFC, I told the UFC that one day she would be champion. And I believe she can be champion one day. She's a really good fighter. When you she look, should, she should win that fight. Uh, she won first three round for sure. First three round with uh, Valentina Shevchenko. He maybe fourth, maybe she lost. Five, fifth maybe but first three for sure for for tyla yeah she she is she is really good she is a, a very good fighter very well rounded um i'm not sure if she's gonna uh, be able to keep the same level of ground fighting as she used to have because on the 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 team she is now they are strictly from thai boxing but she is really good uh, can you can you tell us some, uh, 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 I know Tyler when I was there she was 13 0 and uh, then she get uh, pregnant and uh, yeah. she was uh, out of uh, gym until she she could come back but uh, I know that you believe in her like uh, me like I believe in uh, Predra Bogdanovic so I would be very sad if Predrag make this. Uh, would say, I don't want to be with you yeah. anymore. So. Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, brother, uh, at the end of the day, uh, not many people have the kind of loyalty that we have. You know, uh, this is this is sad, but that's, that's perfect true. Uh, we intend to think that martial arts, Oh, because we are talking about martial arts, we're talking about loyalty, respect, honor. No, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Martial arts just another another job as any other for most of people. Uh, there are a few like me, you, and another handful of people that really, really care about loyalty, about honor, about respect. And we are we live like true samurais. 
that's that's it but most of people they just think about themselves uh, you know if if they need to use you they will use you if they need to use me they will use me and that's it that's it that's life uh, i think i think general people are like this you know in the world is like this everybody the world is is made of billions of selfish people that only look to whoever is by their sides as a way to use them to to get to better places you know uh and, and the fighting business is not different it's not maybe it was different when there were no no money yeah. in the game because there would be a filter that only only people that really evaluated other principles would be fighting would be training together and blah 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 but once you bring money in then you bring all sorts of people yeah. you know and most of people are naturally selfish and they don't care about loyalty or respect or whatever you know they are very and the most important gratitude you know most of people are very ungrateful and i'm you know, I, I had a, a, a wrong a, a wrong view for most of my life. I was expect because I'm very grateful for anybody that ever helped me in any time of my life, whoever gave me an opportunity, or I'm very, very grateful. And I'm I'm a very loyal person. So I always expected that people would be this way with me. And that hurt me badly for years and years and years. And now I'm um, um starting to understand that's exactly the opposite. Most of people will not be like this. Only very special people value gratitude and loyalty. So I gotta be ready to, to face that the mag majority of people I will meet in my life, they will just want to use me and that's it. Once you face the situation like this, it hurts less and less and less, you know? I. I did a lot of things in my life uh, I, even now and uh, I never um, in any part of life any business any job uh, there is the, the I think my opinion is that the worst people are in MMA business yeah easily 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 you know because they are all uh, uh, most of them 99% of them come from the same kind of history uh, no familiar base, no no uh, uh, moral standards because they didn't learn it at home. Uh, that de desperation for money, a uh, very low intelligence. So when you put it all together, the chances of having someone that doesn't give a shit for gratitude, loyalty, or doesn't understand that sometimes it can be much better for you to let some opportunities pass and stay with whoever you know that's gonna be always there for you in your life because this in the long term gonna generate you much more return than the short term uh, opportunities. Uh, but they don't have the intelligence that's needed to, to understand this. They just see that now, 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 they don't even think what's gonna happen tomorrow, you know? Um, so at the end of the day, uh, you're completely right. MMA is the, it's the worst place to be working at, you know, for sure. Uh, I'm praying that it's not the same, uh, situation with Glyco because Glyco is one of the, my favorite, your, your favorite fighter yeah. from your gym. No, no. Why? no Glyco, Glyco was a, a whole complete, uh, a, a completely different different situation i saw him in att that's I, I i couldn't even ask you what is with him is is everything okay with no, you now uh me uh, both glyco and me we agreed that was the best move for him because uh glyco he, I, I don't see him like having a, a pleasure in fighting anymore you know it got to the point that he was fight he was fighting to to get some money to to feed his baby and support his family he was not like 
enjoying fighting anymore. And I see Glyco on the on that stage of life that he got. And he's a very intelligent kid and a very uh, skillful kid. And I see him on that stage where he he need to start getting ready to make the transition to become a coach, right? And I always say that everybody who wants to be a high level coach should have the experience to live abroad or to train abroad for a long time, because this will build, this will make you see different aspects of fighting and this will build a, a more complete and experienced coach. So we go to the funnier subjects. I mean, I know what you what you love the most. It's Luta Libre. That's something you are very good at. I mean, when I speak to Boyan, he always tells that Marcelo Brigadero is the best technician he ever saw. Yes, for sure. Brother, how come you are so good at it? Well, you know, uh, I think Boyan says this because he loves me. <laughs> because he's my brother, you know. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't see myself as anything special this way. Uh, I just think that I love it so much, but so much, so much in a way that Luta Livre, I don't know, man. It's just, it's hard to say, but it it has shaped the way my life is, so many aspects. And there are, I am so addicted to this that I spend so many nights thinking about technique. And every time I teach a technique, I try to think all the scenarios that can come from this. And I try to think more and more and more. So I see this as a, a science. And I love to study it. You know, I, I spend my time, my energy studying it. And that's why I think I, I, I end up like having a, a good technical level. And But that's it. Just, you know. Uh, I love addiction and study. <laughs> I think that's that's the, uh, putting it all together. Yeah. Well, uh, can, can you tell us uh, who learned you a little libre? Who was your coaches? I know, but I want to hear. Well, my main coach was Marcio Cromado. Uh, he, he's my master and always going to be. He only, not only. Uh, taught me Luta Livre, but uh, he he showed me how to be a better human being, how to be a man, and you know, uh, he he is responsible for everything I am and everything I have. Uh, but I had like a, a big big influence as well from uh, Master Daniel Dudani, who always uh, put a lot of his time in show me, showing me things and adapting things to, to me and sharing his insights of every technique with me. So those are, were the two biggest influence I had. Yeah. Uh, the Marcio Cromado is head coach of the R R from RFT team. Can you yeah. tell us something about RFT from? Well, that's, that's where I was raised. That's where, what we, we, when we started, there was not RFT, it was Master Cromado team, it was called. And then after a couple of years, we needed a name for our team because at first, actually, when, when I started, we used to represent uh, Master Eugenio who is a Cromado's coach, Cromado's master. So we used to represent him. After some time, uh, Cromado left and we start representing Master Cromado team for a long time. And then after many years, we decide that we needed a, a brand, we needed a name. And then that's when RFT started. So that's my, that's my home. That's, that's where I was raised. You know, I, I bring this in my, my skin. I got a huge RFT tattoo on myself. Uh, that's, that's my family. Yeah, what, what does it mean, uh, RFT? On, on English, uh, it's called uh, in English would be renovation, renovation fight team, because we were we were the new the new blood of Luta Livre at the time, and all that were the the old guys like Eugenio, Hugo, these guys that were the old guard of Luta Livre, the guys of course super important and very respected, 
but uh, Gromado always had his particular way of teaching, very technical, very, you know, very unique kind of Luta Libre. And we wanted to show that we had something different to, to offer. We, we were like the, the new version of Luta Libre. That's why renovation fights him. Uh, uh, people from Jiu Jitsu like, like uh, Cromado. I, I know uh, opinion from some high level coaches, some fam familiar coaches. Uh, all the best for Cromado. Yeah, everybody, everybody likes him. He's a great guy. He's a, he always been very respectful and very kind to everybody. And yeah, it's, you know, anywhere you go, people just love him. Yeah, but I would say you you brought the Luther Libre quality. I mean, to to a higher standard. I mean, before there was always like competition between Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Luther Libre. Now Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys also respect a lot of Luther Libre fighters because Luther Libre is really high level. And why would you say Luther Libre is better than Jiu Jitsu? What are the advantages of Luther Libre? Well, I think I think the the fact that uh, we we already start without using gi turn the Luta Livre more real for either self-defense or for competing in MMA, let's say. Uh, other factor is that uh, some techniques that are allowed in MMA and that can be used in the streets, they are allowed in Luta Livre since you are a white belt. And now some of them are starting to be allowed in BJJ, but for decades they were forbidden like several kind of heel hooks foot locks you know uh cranks and so now they are they are seeing the importance of starting to allow this and we we do this for ages already you know so that i would say would be the most beneficial aspects of learning Luther delivery people don't know uh that some uh, famous MMA fighters who do good uh, guillotine choke or or heel hooks are uh, basically Luta Libre fighters like uh, Pulhares, like, I don't know. Do you know that, um, you know for sure, but Marcelo Garcia started with Luta Libre. Yeah, yeah, of course. The problem is uh, Luta Libre, we had two big, big, big problems that made the, the this martial art so small compared to BJJ. First one is that the guys that were uh, that really started Luta Livre uh, as as the martial art we know, they they were not interested in, in setting up a plan to spread it worldwide, right? They only want to be the toughest guy in the neighborhood. That's their goal. So as long as they were the toughest guys in their neighborhoods, they were happy. BJJ, on the other hand, they made a big, big marketing campaign and took BJJ everywhere in the world. So this is one very, very, uh, um, one of the main factors that made Luta Libre fail in becoming popular and well-known worldwide. Second one was that we were not able to provide uh, opportunities and uh, conditions for the Luta Livre fighters to stay and remain representing Luta Livre. So we got to a point where nearly all good Luta Livre fighters had to go to BJJ to get the opportunities they wanted. Uh, I had many offers to do that. I never did because my loyalty to my master was above any financial interest. But for me, it's easy to, to judge because I never really start, you know, I never really had like a very, very hard time when it comes to money. Uh, my family was not rich, but was not poor either, was okay. So nowadays I, I avoid making judgment because it's hard to be on someone else's skin. And maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe... Uh, it's harder to value loyalty when you're starving, you know, when you have kids to feed. So I, I, I don't try to be as critical as I, uh, I try not to be as critical as I used to be in the past. 
But the fact is that we were not competent enough as a March award to, to provide opportunities. So we lost 99% of the guys that could be, that could have helped to spread Luta Livre around, you know. Uh, I think uh, Luta Livre community is happy that they, they have you. Because uh, my opinion is that you are the, the best, best possible, the best ever te technical guy I ever uh, roll with. And you were last time when we rolled with you, you uh, has surgery of both both knees. You remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, all, I'm always fucked. My, my body is just destroyed, you know, <laughs> all the time. And now you look uh, 10 years uh, younger. Something happens to, to your body. You're 15 kilos of body fat uh, less more muscles what happened with you're you in now? better shape now what happened yeah I'm, I'm, I'm in a very good shape now because exactly because my injuries uh, last year uh, i decided because what what happened is one thing led to another i had uh, uh, back problems my whole career because i always used to fight as absolute class so i was always training and fighting guys who were 50 60 70 kilos heavier than me and this since i am very young so this destroyed my spine and i also had a couple of knee problems and these two together made my posture become really bad uh, and this made last year to led me to like uh, have three ribs that just exploded you know where they they join on the chest bone here in the on the middle they just exploded while i was training and i couldn't train for a long time uh, and then i decided to focus on my on weight training weight training and and eating better and because after after i had to to retire i think i got so frustrated and so upset with life that i got angry at everything and including on myself it, it was like just like my body let me down so i'm gonna try to fuck my body badly to give it back you know so i was eating shit not taking proper care of me so i got fat i got like lazy so now i decided that even though I cannot fight anymore, I cannot be the way I want to be, I will at least try to stay in shape to, to be able to play with my kids, to be able to be a good coach, to teach a good class, you know, and to have a better, better quality in life. So uh, from six months to now, I, I reframe the way I think. I, I, I changed some some stuff and uh, now i'm doing like uh if you get like weight training and cardio together four hours training a day and i'm enjoying you know i'm enjoying doing that i'm enjoying to to be in shape again to be uh my cardio to be good i'm, I'm back at basketball <laughs> i used to play when i was a kid so i'm playing twice a week basketball and i even joined the team over here in my city i'm part of the team so yeah, I'm trying to enjoy life. Uh, I'm for the first time I can say that I'm enjoying life apart from uh, fighting. You know, I never had a life apart from fighting. So I'm trying to discover what's ne what's over there. You <laughs> know, I never seen anything else. Ah, great! You look you look much much younger than a few months ago, only one year ago. <laughs> so brother, we will have a chance to see you soon in Serbia yeah. to see. Yeah. So you know the idea about MMA reality show that we spoke about that you're going to be one of the coaches and you're going to bring some of your established guys. But first, before you say what do you think about the idea and the, and the MMA reality, I mean, wh what would you say about the name that we chose for the reality show, Ad Astra Pera Spera? That's very specific when it comes to you. So what can you tell us about that? Man, first of all, I, I, you know, it's crazy. You know what I'm gonna say now? It's crazy, and Boyan feels exactly the same way. It's crazy how me and Boyan, how we think alike, and how we are alike. You know, a, a, a Boyan is much more like me than my own uh, sister, my blood sister. You know, he he is like a, a brother. Like, man, it's crazy. Uh, 
because when he told me about this name, I was expecting to suggest him this. <laughs> I, I have even uh, sent myself a message to remember to suggest boy on this name because I think it's a it's a great name. It's a great name and, and it reflects the idea of the reality show. You go through hell to get to the stars. It's amazing. It's amazing. So when I was going to tell Boyan, he, he told me, I said, man, and this has happened many, many times between us. You know, all the time, Boyan says something, I said, man, I would say exactly the same thing. <laughs> and you also play, he also played basketball as a kid. That's the, that's the one similarity also that you didn't know most probably. Yeah. I yeah, was... I think the name is amazing. I think it's an amazing name. And a uh, strong name reflects exactly the idea of the reality show. And man, I, I just love it. I just love it. And what do you think about the, the entire idea? Like uh, competition between Brazilian and Dagestani school of MMA? That, that we're gonna... man, yeah. It's the kind of idea that is so crazy and so exciting that only boy and could have. <laughs> you know, he's the man to have this kind of ideas and when he told me he said man unbelievable i can't believe you're gonna do that and then after i saw that that was for real i said fuck that's a great idea that's awesome uh you're gonna get two uh two countries that are uh, one was the mma mecca for years and years and years and it's very traditional as one of the the big potencies in MMA, which is Brazil. And the other one is the new me mecca of MMA. It's the new uh, potency. All the, the great fighters that, that are coming from Dagestan and, and Russia, uh, they are taking over everywhere. So it's a, an amazing idea, an amazing idea. And happening in Serbia, uh, if you look back at history, Serbia was the stage of all the major battles and wars in the world, everything happened or happened in Serbia or went through Serbia. But Ser Serbia was there all the time, you know? Always on, on the crossroads. That's something that's yeah. east, west. So it's amazing. It's amazing. I think it's, it's a great idea. I'm, I'm super excited to be part of this. I'm super honored to be part of this. Uh, I had many, many, if I was ra rational enough, I would never be able to come because I have so many uh, appointments and, and things that I couldn't miss. But I just said, man, fuck it. I'm just, I'm just calling everybody, canceling everything I have because I want to be part of this. And I think it's going to be something really, really interesting. And it's going to be really, really nice for the MMA fans in Serbia. I see, I see this as a, as something that can take MMA to another level in Serbia, to be honest. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank but... you for name, for let us to use uh, your name, and thank you for for your highest uh, high level fighters you bring us. So Japa, Gian, uh, Le uh, Victor Striker, Victor Striker, and who else? Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. Oh, I, all the high level fighters. Here. I, I, I think that, that on a, uh, such a great idea like this uh, deserves to have the best possible fighters. Uh, so I could not offer anything less than this. So uh, I hope to, to help this project to be very, very successful. And I really expect the, the fans to, to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for everything, brother. Uh, did did I turning you back in uh, coaching, or or you coaching uh, even now in your gym? Because I see on pictures uh, you have a lot of coaches uh, there for striking, for wrestling, for luta libre. For did the reality show motivated you? Yeah, I still coach. Uh, I still coach uh, the, the the ground game. I still set up the strategies. Uh, but I brought uh, Zulu in uh, two years ago to help me out because I am not able to be away anymore, like to be traveling all the time. And I had to, once you have a big team and many fighters fighting abroad, it's hard if you only f go with some of them and if you don't go with the others, you create a fucking horrible atmosphere in the team. 
So I had to make a decision that since I could not go with everybody anymore, I would not go with anyone anymore. So I, I had to bring someone as capable as me to, to be a good cornerman, to be with them on the travel, to sort problems that usually happens during the travels. So I brought Zulu because he's a very experienced and very capable coach. And he also has a great energy and he, he just fits really well to the team. Everybody loves him. So yeah, it was end up being, being good. Maybe in the future, I'll be able to travel again with all of them, hopefully, because I miss it as well. I know they miss it. But for, for the time being, I think that that was the correct uh, decision to make. Okay, brother, thank you. I mean, we are really looking forward to having you here. We, we just like, um, we plan on everything and we plan like creating the best show and you're going to help us with it, of course. It's going to be the highest level since you are involved. So we can't wait for you to come in August so we can create the best show possible. Thank you, brother. This is going to be a big, big pleasure. I'm really looking forward to this and I'm pretty sure you're going to do a great, great show and the fans are going to love it. Uh, I'm 100% sure that we will make it uh, on highest level. We have uh, great production, uh, great uh, place, a great gym uh, near hotel is 20 meters from there. Uh, so everything will happen at, at yeah. one pl in, in one place, which is great. We can do everything at one location. It's a really huge gym, yeah. well equipped, so it's going to be perfect. We're going to make history, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure too. Brother, thank you for your time. We, we don't want to take much of your time. You helped us a lot, but I hope maybe we can make another yeah. podcast when you arrive so we can do it live, in live. when we are together in the oh, studio. So nice. we're yeah. going to do it in August as well, brother. Awesome. Deal. You. It's going to be a pleasure. One more time. Thank you for everything, for helping me, for fighters, for reality show, for September, my September event in Belgrade for first time. I hope I, I can turn you back again after reality with family, with and come here for good. Uh, Serbia is great. You can come and become Serbian. <laughs> Your friendship for me is, is enough. Yeah. It's the, the biggest return I can have from anything. You can trust me. I feel the same, brother. Okay, brothers. Love you, my brother. Love you, brother. Take care. Thank you, brother. Take care. Thank See you, brother. Soon, brother. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.